yes, you read that right, this has a 24 karat gold dial. But let me tell you which part of this watch made a much bigger impact. You know, time has a funny way of telling me something. Every day, I notice that I'm getting grumpier and grumpier. My favorite part of the house now is my lawn, even though we don't have a lawn, so that makes you wonder which lawn I'm talking about, and that my memory is starting to fade with each passing day. And that also explains why I can't remember if we have a lawn or not. And another indicator that I am getting old, really, is that I'm starting to like gold. So I guess that's why old rhymes with gold. I don't know. But also another thing that I would like to um, think is that all of us are aging at the same time. So that kind of makes me feel good. And at the same time, maybe that's how the watch uh, community is starting to appreciate gold more than ever before. Even the younger guys are starting to love gold. But for the longest time, when you come to a certain age, you start to appreciate gold even more. And that's why when I saw that Benestianico is releasing a gold version of their Narede, and this time it's called Narede Oreo, not the cookie, but rather a gold, 24 karat gold dial, I told Benestianico, guys, I, I just got to have one. I just need to review one for the channel. And not only that, it's not just about that gold. Find out what this new narrator has in store because it has so much more to offer rather than just this really very nice gold dial. Find out. Venetianico is back again with another fantastic release showcasing the use of unusual materials on their watches for the budget-minded collector. Note. I did not intend that to be a criticism both of the collector nor Venetianico, but it's more of a less sensational context to the current audience taste and brand offering. All that mumbling aside, all I really meant is that gold is usually reserved for the entry-level luxury to luxury brands traditionally, but now micro brands are starting to find ways to get this precious metal into their collections. But these Italian guys threw in more than this great dial for you to enjoy. And as I threw this narrator on my wrist, I could immediately feel the difference. This new bracelet is called the Sansovino and it's meticulously designed to match the rest of the case. With its very narrow links, the bracelet fully hugs my wrist with relative ease. The rest of the watch retains the signature narrator goodness. The rest of the functions are solid as expected as the Celita SW200 reliable timekeeping caliber is housed inside this case. I am very glad that they used this smooth winding Swiss caliber as it matches the high end feel of the watch as a whole. Let's also not forget that this still has that mirror finished tungsten bezel that's not only going to retain its luster for a very long time but it also gives that gold dial an elegant frame. As a tool watch, it's still very capable with its 200 meters of water resistance and a solid case pack that further emphasizes this enclosed structure. The new clasp also has ample amounts of adjustment holes to ensure that it has that maximum fit for your latest narrated. With a little effort, there's still some strap changing opportunities, although it may be a little bit limited. Off the box, it does not have quick release spring bars nor drilled lug holes as with all of the narrators from Venezianico. This well-loved Horwin strap, thankfully, has those quick-release spring bars, so it's quite easy to install. Let's just say I'm not really shy when it comes to playing around with my watches, but when it comes to this combination, it might not be the best of ideas. I'm honestly already leaning towards keeping the elegant bracelet with its brilliant finishes and the fact that I don't really have a lot of 22mm straps lying around. All of that is already working against this leather combo. This is a great disadvantage of gold watches as it demands a certain decorum, even when experimenting with your bands. Trying on this extra premium sailcloth strap from Artem, and we can see that even this higher end strap can't even elevate the narrative further. I guess this is proof that there is no quantifiable equation for perception, as this combination could not overcome my preconceived impression of this watch. But what about Venetianico's other well known bracelet, the Canova? Huh. I think this can really compete with this new Sansubino band. 
Its polished facets makes it easy for the bracelet to work with and has a totally different personality against the new Sansevino. This has a more rounded and composed class compared to the delicate and intricate appeal of the newer band. This changes the overall impact of the watch, so much so that I could easily forget that this is an Arrayde. Here's what I mean. Beside the previous Arrayde's, it looks like a totally different watch altogether. The bracelet to me changes the visuals drastically. This Narrated 39 is smaller but you know it's part of the collection with all of the hallmarks present in this smaller variant. This shows how big of a part the Canova bracelet plays with the signature Narrated appeal. And that is completely different from this new Sansubino band. Don't get me wrong, both are great bracelets to have but the personality is really worlds apart. That's a good thing in a way because now you can have, theoretically, four different watches with just two similar sized Narrated's. Let me show you what I mean as I pick up this older Narrated Tungsteno. Both are elegant in its own way but you can imagine swapping the bands from each other and you can enjoy two different configurations of two different generations of this type watch. If you're even slightly bought into this brand, the possibilities it offers greatly multiplies the value of your collection. I'm sure that some of you are at that point in watch collecting that you'd rather have more limited edition pieces than to be bothered to swap straps and bracelets, but until some of us actually catch up to that point, these little playabilities will keep us budget collectors entertained. But even in that little area of watch collecting, Venetianico also offers an accessible alternative such as this exotic narrative bronzo. Yes, it does look like that Venetianico is releasing a ton of watches, sometimes mere weeks apart from each other, but it does not dilute the brand. Well, at least not yet. And that, I think, is another benefit of this new bracelet. This narrator avoids feeling like a rehash of what has been done before. But that's just my two cents. Here's what you've been saying about this Nerede Oreo. Nizar Mirror says that it's a beautiful watch and a beautiful, unusual bracelet, but he wouldn't call it a Jubilee type. Benjamin Biss hijacks my comment section once again and he thinks that this better suits the Redentore more than the Nerede. He also thinks that Benishaniku would do well to hone in on the best ideas rather than going through so many at such a rapid pace. Rage Against Time says it's an awesome looking watch and wish that it was a tad smaller and I do think that at some point they will make a smaller version of this. And finally A51NX says that it's a cool dial but he thinks that the date at 3 ruins it. It might look better at 6. Let's put our focus back on the design of the case. The champers of the steel body was a welcome addition a few generations back and now with this new bracelet, it not only adds that directional shine to the bracelet, but it also adds some angled cuts that echoes the case curves. It's got a beautiful taper and the articulation is very much appreciated. The clasp sort of disrupts the visual flow, but it more than makes it up with that gorgeous center polish and adjustment holes. The case back is always nicely illustrated, a signature of Venetianico. They always try to add some sort of renaissance art in this area. This is a tribute to the Venetian gold beaters. And speaking of gold, let's talk about that wonderful dial. Let me get this out of the way and flat out tell you that this is not a solid gold dial. If you look at the brand's press images and videos, it's pretty clear that these are dials that were tumble finished electroplated with 24 karat gold particles and then sealed with clear varnishes to achieve this very unique effect. It's still authentic gold and it's still a great value for what you're paying in my opinion. Having handled actual solid gold watches makes me appreciate how amazing it is to own a 24 karat gold dialed watch from this microbrand. One thing that they actually gloss over is the fact that they use tumble polishing treatment on these dial surfaces. That actually creates a unique pattern for every dial. This makes it a bit more organic and uneven. There's a certain spirit that it emanates when light hits it at all angles. Pair that up with that tungsten bezel and you've got one glorious effect that I've never seen before on a watch. And the piece de resistance is that blue loom that complements that warm and lively dial. It's hard to top that dial but at the end of my review, I think the bracelet still made the biggest impact to me. 
it's well built, it's got a beautiful clasp, and it works very well with the case. If Benishaniko didn't call this an Erede, I could easily went along with whatever name they came up with and call it a totally new collection. However, they did call it an Erede and it still works in every way. After all, when you have Rolex giving you the choice between an Oyster and a Jubilee bracelet, what prevents Venezianico from doing the same? The only difference is that it's relatively attainable, even though it has a 24 karat golden facade. And that is the Nerede Oreo from Venezianico. It's the 24 karat gold dial Nerede that's pulled with that very nice mirror finish tungsteno dial or oh, bezel. And it's just luxurious in every facet of this watch. Well, not every facet, but every angle that you look at this watch is just luxurious, just premium looking. And the heft is, of course, uh, very, very uh, pleasant to, to, to wear. Uh, it's very comfortable too because of that very nice bracelet. And this is a, a big surprise for me because this new bracelet that they added is just stunning. Very stunning. It has the pleasing angles with that polished uh, center links. It reminds you of both Breitling uh, bracelets and also the Jubilee bracelet from Rolex. It's really, really well done. They still don't have those uh, quick release spring bars, which is a criticism that I always have with, with uh, Venezianico. I don't like that. I wish that they would release something that's a lot easier for us to use. Uh, but also another thing that they're going to release is a new version of that end link. They said they're going to do that. And um, yeah, another thing that most people might criticize Venezianico for is that they have some really big uh, feeling watches. And this is no different. This also wears a little bit big, even though it wears very comfortable, but you know, I don't mind that. I mean, again, if people people would comment that 42 is not for me, I disagree. I just like, I, I, I like, that's, that's my barrier. That's my very farthest threshold. I can wear 42 comfortably and I don't mind doing that. Um, but hey, if they can make this at a 40 or 39 millimeter, that would be even better. That would have made it a lot better especially for me but maybe that's on the pipeline we don't know and um i suspect this is going to be another sellout hit for benesianico it just looks so good that galvanized textured gold 24 karat gold dial is just amazing so comment down below do you love this narrate oreo the same as i do do you have a favorite um benesianico i think my favorite benesianico is the uh, Nereides, and especially the tungsteno, the, the that tungsten dial is just just amazing, and it's a uh, it's very distinct, and I I love it. So comment down below, let me know what you guys think. Maybe those interesting good comments will <laughs> will come out with, or we'll talk about that with our inevitable uh, video that we're going to make or show that we're going to make. And um, there's a lot of changes in the channel. Uh, you can see also some, we're going to review some watch equipment like the Enig watch or watch winder. We have the Mirage travel roll. We have some big projects uh, coming up. I want to uh, start talking about them, talking about the stuff that we've been working behind the scenes. Once again, and the 6030 chronograph is already on sale in Indonesia. We're soon going to launch that. Uh, internationally so stay tuned for that we're going to finally get that out and um, stay tuned for the channel and let's see what other stuff we have in store for you so stay tuned sub and su subscribe and comment I don't I should am, am I begging for subscribers no I, I want to be I want to stay in character you can subscribe you can you're you're, you're old enough I see what I did there. You're old enough to decide for yourself.